Hello again. I have to begin by making a small confession, which is that I read the Bible regularly and I'm also uh, familiar with the Quran. Christians believe that the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament, is the word of God uh, in church after the minister has given a reading from the Old Testament. He will say, this is the word of God. So the Old Testament and the New are both alike supposed to be divinely inspired, which is also um, believed by Muslims, of course, of the Quran. I thought it would be interesting to compare what Christians accept with what Muslims also have as their common belief, because there seems to be a strange idea that Islam is somehow a weird religion completely different from Christianity, and that it has different notions, different morality, different view of um, the deity. It's not true at all. The two religions are, are alarmingly similar, really. Let me start with a simple matter, such as um, the virgin birth and also the story of John the Baptist's birth. Those who are regular church churchgoers or Christians will probably know that John the Baptist's father was Zacharias, and he was very old, his wife was barren, they'd never had children. And yet the angel Gabriel came and announced to Zacharias that his wife Elizabeth was going to have a baby, which was quite a surprise to him. Here are two accounts of what happened. Here's one, the angel says, O Zacharias, verily we give thee glad tidings of a son, whose name shall be John. And then the angel says... Da, da, da. The, the sign to you is that you will not speak to be able to speak to men for three nights. And here's another account. The angel says, Fear not, Zacharias, for your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and you'll call him John. Hmm. This is very strange. And then after a few more words... The angel says, Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak. Right, I'm guessing that very few viewers will be able to tell me which of those accounts was from the New Testament, the book of Luke, and which was from the Quran. They are identical. There's no difference at all between them. The same thing goes for the birth of Jesus, the virgin birth. In both the Quran and the Bible, Jesus was born of a virgin. Again, here's a couple of brief extracts from accounts. Okay, and the angel Gabriel tells Mary that she's going to have a baby. She says, how can I have a boy when no man has touched me and when I am no harlot? Thus saith the Lord, it is easy for me. And here again is an account. Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Da, da, da. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Well, there we are. Two identical accounts of the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel to Mary, that she's going to have a baby, even though she's a virgin. Again, I don't suppose many people will be able to tell me which of those accounts came from the Bible and which came from the Quran. It's probably a bit of a surprise to people to know that the Quran shares a lot of the theology and um, an awful lot of the stories of the Bible. It's not that surprising, really, because um, the Prophet was very familiar with the Bible. There we are. What about things like having more than one wife? Aren't Muslims allowed to have four wives or something? That's surely different from Christianity, where we are limited to one wife. It's true that the Quran allows polygamy, but then so too does the Bible. Many of the famous characters in the Bible have more than one wife. The practice is not condemned anywhere at all in Scripture. Abraham, Jacob, King David, Solomon, they all had more than one wife, and this is all mentioned casually in passing. The Bible accepts polygamy as a perfectly normal practice. Um, the founder of the Reformation, Martin Luther, accepted it. 
he said that if people want to have more than one wife, if Christians say they want to another wife there's nothing he can say about it because it's not forbidden in scripture which it isn't nowhere in the old or new testament is there any prohibition on polygamy so the position in the bible on polygamy is precisely the same as it is in the quran what about all those terrible punishments though that islam orders things such as cutting off hands and stoning to death surely that's not in the bible well let's see when men fight with one another and the wife of the one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of him who is beating him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the private parts, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall have no pity. Anyone like to guess whether that's from the Quran or from the Bible? Well, actually, it's Deuteronomy, the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 25, verses 11 to 12. In the Quran, stoning to death is certainly suggested as a punishment for adultery, which we find terribly shocking today. The Bible goes a lot more <laughs> further than this, though, because they recommend stoning to death for kids who are cheeky. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he might die. Deuteronomy 21, verses 18 to 21. <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning all this is very simple. If we take odd bits and pieces from any holy book, we can soon put together a false and unflattering picture of the religion which follows that book. We can do it with Islam, just as we can with Christianity or Judaism or the Hindu or Sikh religions. The Quran is very similar to the Christian Bible because, of course, it was in part copied from it. I'm neither a Christian nor a Muslim, so I've got no prejudice in the matter either way, but I can look at both books and um, spot how similar they are. The next time somebody talks disparagingly about Islam, it might be worth looking at the Quran and seeing what it actually says, and then going one step further and comparing it with similar passages in the Bible you'll find that there's not much to choose between those books.